So in the previous video, we saw the real and monetary circular flow within an economy. We saw how the two entities, households and firms, interact within an economic system. We also found that the households are the primary suppliers of factor services to the firms. So in a way, uh, the household which is playing the primary role of a consumer was also the provider of factor services to the firm. And in that case, the firm initially acts as a consumer of factor services. In return, the firm produces goods and services and makes them available for consumption to different sections of the society or the households and uh, thereby reversing the role and the firm plays the role of a producer and the household playing the role of consumption. But fundamentally, the primary role of a household or an individual is that of consumption and that of a firm is that of production. Uh, we also saw how the roles and the goals of these two entities might uh, be very contrasting in given situations. We found that the household or the individual, since they are the suppliers of factor services, they are more keen on utility maximization, uh, which they would get by getting a better value, better quantity, at a lesser price of goods and services. And also, since they expect higher factor payments for their services, they would look forward to higher remuneration in form of rents, interest, wages, salaries, which may push up the cost of production. Uh, on the other hand, the firms being suppliers of goods and services would uh, be keen on finding uh, the prices of goods and services going up and the cost of production going down, which means that they would, on the contrast, be interested in raising prices and lowering of rents, interest, wages and salaries. So this contrasting goal and role of a household and firm might lead to certain challenges within an economic system. This also shows a very interesting thing which can be considered as a, a very very contrast behavior of an individual when he behaves as a consumer and when he behaves as a factor of production or an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur one would be uh, happy if uh, the price of the commodities go up and the profit margin, that is the difference between the price and cost of production increases. While being a consumer, one would be keen when the prices are lowered and the gap between marginal utility or the de benefit derived from consumption and the price, the gap between the two is, is increasing. So uh, this was consumption and production as two basic economic activities within an economy that we studied in the previous video. Now, uh, taking it a little further, let's, let's understand the role of government as another neutral or third entity within the economy. So, so let's do one thing. Let's, let's introduce the government in this particular model as a third entity and see its role as that of a regulator. So let's say that because of this contrasting role between households and firms, which happen to be the same entities within an economy but with varied interests, there arises in a market the role of another entity that we call as, as, as government. So government is another entity within the economy which would play the primary role of a, of a regulator. So on one hand we have the consumers, the producers and the government which plays the role of a regulator. And uh, uh, the goal of governments can be considered as growth, uh, stability, which we'll uh, discuss subsequently in the forthcoming lectures, development, development, and welfare. So welfare maximization can also be considered as one of the important uh, uh, goals of a government. So certainly infrastructure development, wealth maximization for the country could be an uh, employment uh, and various other factors could be important uh, objectives of the government. But uh, in this particular case, to simplify the understanding, we may call it welfare maximization. So consumers work for utility maximization, the firms for profit maximization, while the governments are supposed to take care of welfare maximization. Now the governments also uh, are a party to this circular flow model in terms of its transaction with the other entities. So uh, where we saw the interaction between household and the firm, uh, the households also interact with governments and this also is a cyclical process and similarly the, f the government also interacts with the firms and it's a two-directional process. So the governments 
in order to facilitate welfare, in order to facilitate investments within the economy, to reduce disequilibrium of distribution of wealth among different members of the society, might try to regulate the whole system by collection of uh, taxes by collection of different kinds of taxes from the consumers. This could be direct taxes in form of income tax, this could be wealth tax, and various other taxes that the government uh, charges from individuals and households. Now, similarly, the government might also take taxes from firms, and uh, these taxes could be in form of indirect taxes, excise duties, and various others for goods and services which are supplied by firms. On the other hand, the government might offer employment, employment opportunities and direct transfers to individuals in form of subsidies and various other benefits. So this, this could be employment as one of the benefits and various other benefits to the households. And on the other hand, uh, the firms might also get a lot of benefits in form of tax concessions, tax holidays, subsidies, and even the demand for their produce uh, which the government might buy. So uh, in this form there could be transfers, transfers, payments to the firms and also to the, to the households. So this shows the interaction between the three entities, uh, the government, the firms and the households and uh, the monetary flow is in form of uh, the payments for uh, goods and services from the household to the firms and the payment for factor services from the firms uh, to the households. On the other hand, there could be transfer of payments, which is again bidirectional between the government and the households, and similarly between the firms and the government. And the government is expected to utilize these funds in planning its uh, policies and implementing them uh, with respect to growth, stability, development, and welfare maximization. Uh, on similar lines, we can have an understanding of a more uh, complex model, which could be a four or a five entity model. Uh, like in this particular case, if we see, you can see this five entity model, wherein we have the households, we have uh, the firms that we discussed in the previous session, the government, and then the other two entities could be the financial system or the financial market and the foreign nations or the other countries that uh, a country might well uh, be doing trade in an open economy setup. So we could still see a, a bi-directional flow between uh, these entities and uh, this could also be understood here as uh, the real and monetary flow. Primarily uh, we, we see here the monetary flow. The households import goods and services from foreign countries or in the other sense it may be the firms importing it for the households but it primarily moves to the households. So the households import these goods and services and the payment for these imports uh, move out from uh, the households to uh, the foreign nationals. On the other hand, uh, the firms may be uh, importing similarly capital goods for production and might be paying a uh, foreign currency in exchange of that. Uh, the foreign nations uh, might be importing a lot of products from our country and so there could be exports from households to the foreign nations and similarly from the firms uh, with its produce which is sold abroad to other countries uh, of the world. Then we could also see uh, the financial system wherein the savings which are channelized from the households uh, move into banks and other financial systems and how they take shape of investments in form of the money that is lent out to firms and the firms produce goods and services and do various kinds of businesses out of these borrowings. And then there's a backward reverse flow of uh, the interest payments back to the banking system or the financial market and similarly to households. So this is a simplistic, a very generalized model uh, of flow of uh, goods and services and flow of money among different entities within an economy and this line in the end uh, which uh, gives a slight overview of the of uh, the measurement of the GDP or the income of a country which we call as national income and it's a national income equation which shows that the income or the expenditure uh, within the economy uh, which should be equal the entire expenditure in the economy should be equal to the entire income uh, because an income uh, to one is an expenditure to another. When money changes hands, uh, money moves out from pocket of one and moves into the pocket of other, the total quantum of income and expenditure is generally supposed to be equal. And similarly, the factor payments, let's say the, the total price of the goods and services that were sold 
uh, would would actually include uh, all the payments for factor services, which is rent, interest, wages, salaries, profits, and uh, and taxes even to the government. So in that sense, the national income equation includes uh, these factors, which we call as C, I, G, and X. Uh, where C refers to the consumption of the households, I refers to the investments made by the firms, G refers to the government spending or expenditures, and X minus M refers to net exports, which which are an outcome of the outflow and the inflow, the difference between the outflow and inflow of money between the host country and the foreign countries. So all collectively lead to the entire expenditure within the economy and this entire expenditure is the entire income uh, within the economy. So this is the circular flow income model for four sectors primarily, but we may also call it as a five entity model in an open economic setup. Thank you.